Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome to my video for the Sea Life Challenge. I'm using the Otterly Awesome Set by Ellen Hudson along with the matching dies. And then I also have this A2 Curve die. I've used it so many times. I've had it for a long time. It's by Simon Says Stamp. So I'm gonna be using my Distress Oxide inks to create my background. I'm gonna start with Cracked Pistachio in the middle, and you can see I'm a little off-center here because my otters are gonna be sitting to the right. And um, I have a piece of Strathmore 90-pound watercolor paper. Um, I like this paper because it's thinner than the 140 pound, which is, I think, sometimes a little bit too thick when you're layering and it warps. So I just, this is one of my favorites. It's not a bright white, so I usually only use it when I'm going to be covering the whole thing. All right, so once I have my color laid down, I'm going to spritz it with some water. Now, I don't want to get puddles of water because I'm not looking for a water stain look. I'm looking for a pretty smooth look. So I'm gonna just go ahead and fast forward this while I heat it up. I like to use my heat tool with the oxide inks when I spray them because it kind of moves the color a around a little bit and it blends better. You can see I've got a little pool of color to the right, so I'm just gonna grab a tissue and lightly dab that. Uh, and then I'll just continue drying here. And as it's uh, finishing the drying process, I'm noticing that there's a little bit too much of that cracked pistachio in the middle. The nice thing about these oxide inks is that you can layer them up. So I'm gonna grab some of that broken china, which was my middle color, and cover a little bit of that green up, spray it again, and then go back to drying with my heat tool. So the first time I created this background, I really just colored and sprayed and dried, and then I was done but uh, it's a little bit different every time. Now you can see I'm getting kind of a water stain with that faded jean, so I thought, well, I'm gonna try to cover it up. So I added some more ink and add some more water and then go back to drying. And I think I added a little bit too much water this time, so I grabbed a tissue and I kind of dabbed it a little bit uh, to pick it up. And then after that, I thought, you know what? I need a little bit more green because I spread the water around a little bit too much. So, I mean, you could sit here all day and just perfect something and I eventually will stop, but I wanted to get more of a rounded effect for the pistachio area because um, it's going to be sort of the glow that's coming from behind my otters. So it was important to get the size of that right. Anyway, so at this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna go with whatever it is I have right now. And I want some water spots, so I'm gonna put some water on my hands and kind of flick it onto my cardstock. And this will give me a bunch of different size drops, but I'm not going to pick them up with a tissue. I'm just going to dry it up. So it'll react a little bit with the water, but it won't remove that much color. It'll just sort of create a water drop that's much more subtle, because I didn't want to remove any color. All right, so now I'm done with this background, I can move on to my otters. I'm gonna stamp them onto some Nina Solar White cardstock in Antique Linen Distress Ink. For the large otter, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with the dye before I col color him. Um, and this is going to cut his arms out, and that's why I'm cutting this one out with the dye. And uh, then I just stamped the small one as well. As far as coloring these guys, there wasn't really a method or a series of steps I used. I just grabbed three colors and I just kind of went in between all three colors until I felt like I got it right. Um, you can see this top one, E37, has a square top and it's because it's an original uh, Copic marker, it's not a sketch marker. Uh, and so that means I don't have the brush tip for it. I have kind of this fine tip. And it's not my favorite, but I really wanted to use that color. So anyway, I'm kind of going back and forth between all these three colors first, and then I'll take this E29, which is a much, much darker brown color. And I'm gonna color the tops of his feet with this marker. And then I'm gonna take the marker and draw some outlines. And that'll kind of define, since his feet are sticking out, his arms are sticking out, I wanna make sure that they're more defined so you can see them as compared to the body. So so I'm going to outline them with the E29, but not all the way around, just kind of in key areas. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the edges, and that'll sort of make my um, otter sort of pop a little bit. And then I'm just going to work around his mouth and his nose to sort of make sure that I have some dimension there. I'm just going to go back and forth between all the different colors. And then uh, to color the, the nose with the mouth on it, I just colored the whole thing with the lightest color. And then I took some medium. So the circle part of his mouth, 
is a different, it, it's, it's the combination of the lighter colors and that makes it stand out like it's forward of the body a little bit. Then I just made sure I had more of a darker outline around that area so it kind of um, popped forward. And so anyway, I'm just kind of going through here and adding color where I think I need it. And the best thing to do, I think, is to look at the final product in my photo and just use shading similar to what you see in the final product. Now, I colored over uh, the detailed features of his face, so I had to, had to add them back in. So I'm going to use my 0.3 Copic liner to add his nose. And then for the whiskers, I'm going to start on the edge and move toward him because I've got those lines on the edge. It turns out I'm actually going to cut those white whiskers off and I'll show you that in a second. But anyway, I'm draw those back in and then I'm looking at the stamp to see where the eyes are. You could do this before you color because this is a Copic safe marker and so it should be fine if you wanted to do that first. Um, I also added a little bit of detail around his ears to make them stand out a little bit, uh, just like a little line or two. For the little guy, I'm doing the exact same thing with my coloring. It's a much harder area to get right because it's so tiny. So I'm just doing the best I can to make it look just like the other otter uh, with the same kind of shading pattern. And I used the E29 again to outline the areas to make them stand out a little bit more. The reason why I didn't die cut this little guy out first is because uh, I don't want that white outline you get when you die cut an image because he's going to be right on his mama's belly and if there's a white outline around him I think he's going to look a little funny. So that's why I'm just going to color this guy and um, cut him out. I'm also going to cut out the white edges around the larger otter that I got from the die cut. So I'll do that in a second. And then when I'm done coloring, I'll add back those Copic liner details like I did with the large otter. I want to say the total coloring time in real time was about 10 minutes or so, maybe 15. So I'm going to cut the little one out and then go back to the big one and cut the white edges. And that way I get a nice clean edge. And notice I also cut the whiskers off because I didn't feel like I needed them and they had the white around them. And um, you could add them back onto the background if you want to, but I didn't feel the need to do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna create this white curve on the left-hand side. And to do this, I'm gonna measure one and five eighths at the bottom and one and five eighths at the top. And this is how I line up my A2 curve to make sure that I have it straight across the cardstock. And notice that I'm putting my surgical tape on my shirt before I put it on my cardstock because it's a new piece that I just got off the roll and I don't want it to uh, rip my cardstock when I take it off. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing um, with this piece again, and this time I'm measuring three quarters of an inch because I wanna layer these two pieces. And then again, match up the pencil lines with the die and run it through the big shot. So here's how I'm gonna layer these, just to add a little bit of something interesting on the card with the white. So I'll flip over the larger one and put some scotch foam tape. I'm not sure why I skipped that whole area in the middle, but I'll fill it in later. And I had trouble lining it up exactly, uh, and so I decided to grab my Misty and I used the left edge. So I put the bottom part there against the left edge, and then I figured out I want about an eighth of an inch down, and I lined up the larger one against that left edge. And when I pressed down, everything lined up perfectly. So another great use for the Misty. This A2 size die is from my Avery L custom panel set. And because my watercolor paper, I cut it larger so that I would have some wiggle room in how I um, laid it out on my card. Now I can see exactly where I want to cut this watercolor piece by using my A2 size die. So I'll position it and I'm using my uh, white here to figure out where that's gonna be so I can center my otter and I just placed him there on top of my watercolor piece to sort of figure out where he needed to go. So once I figure out where to cut this watercolor piece, I can run it through my big shot and then I'll have exactly the right size for my card base. Now I'm gonna fill up that area, uh, cut a piece of scotch foam tape, I do this all the time, I just split it in the middle. And then I'm going to add some tape runner on the curve because that's gonna lay flat against my card. And then again, I'm gonna use the Misty to get this lined up in the corner to make sure this is right up against that left edge of my watercolor panel. And then I'm gonna take my otters and glue them together. And you don't really have to do this actually because they're gonna get adhered on the back. But just for safety, I went ahead and did it. Uh, just put some glue on the big otter and I found that sliding the head from the bottom is the best way to get uh, the little one inside the big one's arms. And so I positioned it so it was just underneath the face of the uh, large one in the back so you could see both faces clearly. And then I'll do my sentiment. I'm going to use the Misty to make sure I get it right. 
And I'm just gonna ink it up with some Hero Arts uh, black ink and stamp it right there in the blue area. Sometimes it's hard to decide if you're gonna put your sentiment right on your background or kind of add something that's been cut out. In this case, I decided to just add it straight on the background. You shouldn't be afraid to do that. And then I put some ATG tape runner on the back and put it onto a card base, the same A2 size. And now I'm uh, using my Stampin' Up! Dimensionals. They're just some circular foam adhesive and I cut a piece for the tail. I put three pieces behind this otter plus that piece on the tail. And then I'll take the release backing off and put uh, him right on top of the pistachio part. So it looks like that there's kind of a glow behind it. Now I wanted to create some water ripples. I'm not sure I did a great job doing this, but um, I decided to take my chalk marker, which I didn't want to use the gel pen because it's a very bright white and I wanted this to sort of be faded out. So I'm mimicking the lines of the otter and just drawing lines here and there coming out from around the otter. And then I felt white wasn't enough because you're going to have a little bit of shadow in these ripples. So I took my tumbled glass marker and I'm using the brush tip side, I think because my fine tip doesn't work very well. And I'm coloring over some of the chalk and then next to some of the chalk and just kind of creating some new lines with the tumble glass. Now I'm rubbing it a little bit with my finger, but that's not really doing anything. So I just kind of went back and forth between the two markers until I got something that I thought looked at least a little bit like some water ripples. Anyway, so that is the card for today. These guys are so cute. I love the stamp set. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.